With the end in sight for Attack on Titan, there are a bunch of theories on how the series will end. But has the show given us clues already? And what other details could we have missed in the series? That's what we're going to take a look at in this video. From easter eggs to upcoming plot points to sly references to real life people and even connections to other animated works, this is 25 things you missed in Attack on Titan. Spoiler warning, there will be references to both the show and the manga in this video. When we first met Historia, we, along with her friends, were pretty unsuspecting that she was actually the Princess of Paradise. But upon a rewatch, there are subtle clues about her real identity all along, mainly by the way her friends and other people interact with her and treat her as some sort of goddess. And now, looking in hindsight, it kind of feels inevitable that she would have been made queen. Unsurprisingly, Eren never forgot the face of the Titan who killed his mother. So when Eren, Mikasa, and Hannes come across the Titan again, they try to exact their revenge. Hannes attacks the Titan, who is revealed to be Dina Fritz, before dying, and in anger, Eren lashes out and punches the Titan. What happened next was very surprising at the time, with the other Titans swarming toward Dina and killing her. Later on, after learning about the coordinate, we now understand that it was due to the connection between the royal family and the founding titan and the founding titan's abilities. Speaking of Dina, she wasn't the only recognizable titan to be revealed in season 3. As we know, Dina was the titan who killed Eren's mother, but there are also a number of familiar titans made out of Grisha's patriot friends. Take, for example, the old man who ate Eren and Armin back in Season 1, who, alongside a few of Grisha's other friends, became a titan in that flashback scene. There are tons of other foreboding easter eggs that go all the way back to Season 1, with there even being a hint to Season 4 hidden in the title card of the very first episode of the series. Spotted by Reddit user Ethan075, if you look closely enough at the title card, you'll see not only the Nation of Marley, but also the wall that the Marleyans actually use to unleash the Titans upon the Devils of Paradise and the Final War. But it's not only Season 4 content that was teased early on in Season 1. One of the biggest reveals in the first season was Eren turning into the Attack Titan after seemingly dying. But there were clues hidden in the first season that suggested his Titan abilities. While in the 104th Cadet Corps, Eren practices using his vertical maneuvering gear but has problems using it and ends up falling down and hitting his head. If you look closely enough, you'll notice that steam starts to rise from his injured head. At the time, fans who noticed this had no idea what it meant, but of course, now we know that it was foreshadowing his Titan abilities and what he's really capable of. Eren is not the only main character to have their powers foreshadowed early on. While Mikasa may not have the same kind of powers as Eren, her awakened powers are actually suggested in Episode 6 where she uses her heightened powers to fight off a bunch of traffickers who tried to kidnap her. This is revealed later in full when she's discussing the first time she felt stronger than normal with Levi. Back to the foreshadowing in Episode 1 now. As the show opens, Eren is seen sleeping under his tree and there are quick flashes of what he's actually dreaming about. While Eren doesn't remember what happened in his dream, if we slow down the frame, we can see that there are images of the Titans breaking into Shiganshina and Walmaria, as well as the smiling Titan eating his mother. All of this will later come true. Again, this is another piece of foreshadowing to Eren's abilities as the Attack Titan, who is able to access memories from both the past and future. For anyone who's purchased or read the Attack on Titan guidebook, you'll probably know that it lists the birth dates of all the main characters. The dates in question usually have some level of importance, but none more so than the birth date of Marco Boat. Along with a number of other characters, Marco has a grisly death after being bitten in half by a Titan and is found with only half of his body remaining. Coincidentally, Marco's birthday is June 16th, which you may realize is the exact middle of the year. Or should we say, halfway through the year. As subtle references go, this is a pretty dark one, but it's also kind of funny. One character's birthday which is significantly lighter is Armin's, with him being born on November 3rd, which is Culture Day in Japan, and the holiday centers around academics, fine arts, and culture. This makes a lot of sense, seeing as Armin's main passions are learning about life outside of the wall. Speaking of Armin, it's not only his birthday that's a subtle reference. In fact, his name has many, many meanings. In German, the name has multiple connotations including whole, universal, warrior, and soldier. But his full name, Armin Arlert, also has a particular reasoning, although one that has a little less meaning. 
The manga's creator, Hajime Isayama, gave Armin his full name because he claims it sounds like the word aluminum. But that joke probably doesn't land as well in the UK, where it's pronounced aluminium, but hey. Isayama also gave him a name with alliteration as he found it easier to remember. Now, we have talked about the show foreshadowing events to happen later on, but none are as blatant or as spoiler-filled as the opening credits to Season 3. Just like Rick and Morty detail some of the events to come in their title sequence, the Season 3 title sequence of Attack on Titan has many references, from the existence to Marley, to Armin's burnt body, to Reiner being defeated, and even to Irwin's death, all being shown in flash images. All in all, the sequence is pretty awesome, but if you're watching the season for the first time, there are some pretty darn obvious spoilers. Just out of curiosity, did the sequence spoil anything for you, or did you not notice anything? Let us know down below! There's another blink and you'll miss it moment in Season 3, but this one is admittedly much more heartbreaking and sad. Marlowe's death. This is, in part, to do with his relationship with Hitch. As Marlowe accepts his fate, he thinks about what Hitch is doing, and he suddenly realizes his true feelings for Hitch in a moment that goes by pretty quick. This moment adds even more heartbreak to an already horrifying scene. When it comes to Reiner, there are actually a number of hints to his actual identity as the Armored Titan. As Eren joins the 104th Cadet Corps, they ask him questions about the Armored and Colossal Titans, not knowing that both are listening in carefully. As Eren starts talking about the Armored Titan in particular, you can see Reiner paying special attention, suggesting his true identity as the Armored Titan. Reiner's future fight with Eren is also foreshadowed, as during training, Reiner had to attack Eren before he tells Eren it's his turn to attack. This is a sly reference to the duo's relationship, where Reiner has to attack the 104th Cadet Corps in an attempt to kidnap Eren. Years later, Eren returns the favor as he attacks Marley and tells Reiner he understands why he did what he did, and that he would have done the same thing in his shoes. Moving away from in-house references, foreshadowing, and easter eggs, when it comes to war and sports, parallels are often made to strategic games, such as chess. But in Attack on Titan, there are literal parallels between the series and chess, with there being a number of chess motifs throughout. In fact, we can even break the characters down into their respective chess pieces. Eren is the king, as he is the most important piece and needs to be protected at all costs or the game is lost. Levi is the queen, one of the most powerful and most important pieces on the board, who can cause the greatest amount of damage to the opposing side. Mikasa is the rook, with her standing atop the walls protecting them from titans. Both Armin and John are bishops, one black, one white, which represents the difference in ideologies between the two, while Erwin and Hanje are the trusted knights. Unfortunately for every other character in Attack on Titan, they, like the pawns, are expendable. So, if your favorite character hasn't been listed, maybe don't get too attached. Seeing as Attack on Titan is one of the most successful mangas of all time, it's unsurprising that they make references to one of the most successful graphic novels of all time, Alan Moore's Watchmen. In fact, two characters from Attack on Titan were based off of characters from Watchmen. Fan-favorite Levi is actually based off of Rorschach. Both are known for their cold and cynical demeanor, often playing the lone wolf anti-hero archetype. Erwin, however, is based on Ozymandias, and when looking at the two, the similarities are quite clear. But the connection runs deeper than that, with both being natural-born leaders who are both cold and calculating and unafraid to sacrifice those below them. Back in its heyday in 2013, and even to some extent now, there were very few shows bigger than Breaking Bad, and a number of other works have paid reference to the show or parodied it over their runs. Attack on Titan is no different. In fact, Hajime Isayama has admitted to being a fan of Western shows such as Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones, and paid reference to Walter's crooked lawyer and leader of his own spin-off show, Saul Goodman, while drawing a Titan with an uncanny resemblance to Bob Odenkirk. Isayama also admitted that he based the design for Falco Grice off of another Breaking Bad character, Aaron Paul's Jesse Pinkman. Speaking of Jesse Pinkman, Jesse was famously originally meant to be killed off in Season 1 of Breaking Bad, but they decided to keep him around for the long haul after falling in love with Aaron Paul and his performance as the character. For Attack on Titan, a similar thing happened with the character of Sasha Blouse. Sasha was actually supposed to be killed off in issue 9 of the manga, with a whole chapter being dedicated to Sasha and ending with her death. But Isayama was unsure whether or not this was the right decision, and was convinced otherwise by one of his editors after they cried reading the chapter. 
Of course, it didn't save her for very long, though, just like a number of other Attack on Titan characters. As we've mentioned already, a number of characters are based off of a number of other fictional characters, but some of the Titan forms are actually based on real people, namely MMA fighters. Eren's attack Titan form is said to be loosely based on martial artist Yushin Okami, who Isayama said had the ideal physique for a middleweight mixed martial artist, but the reference is mostly based on the fighting style. The Armored Titan also has a familiar reference, with the look and fighting style being based on UFC fighter and WWE wrestler Brock Lesnar. When it comes to the character of Kenny, there are two famous people who were their inspiration. Firstly, Kenny was loosely based on the famous serial killer Jack the Ripper, but the character's also meant to resemble a popular video game character, Trevor from Grand Theft Auto V. Now that's a crossover I wasn't exactly expecting, but I like it. Speaking of crossovers we weren't expecting, have you ever thought that Annie's hairstyle looked somewhat familiar? No, probably not, but apparently it was based on Canadian musician Avril Lavigne, with an image of her being used as a reference. Although the similarities end there, and I'm not expecting Annie to be singing Skater Titan anytime soon. Like Armin, there are a number of characters whose names have a great level of importance or are based on historical figures. Take Erwin, for example, whose name was based on the famous German general Erwin Rommel. Mikasa also has added meaning to her name. While the literal translation for Mikasa is three bamboo hats, there's also an added meaning, with her name being a reference to an old Japanese warship that was built in the 1890s. Apparently, Isayama named Mikasa this, as he believes that a series will become successful if you name a female character after a famous battleship. I mean, I guess he wasn't wrong. While Erwin's name may be taken after Rommel and his personality after Ozymandias, his likeness has a very strange source, Paris Hilton. In fact, Erwin's look was apparently modeled after a Secret Service member who appeared in the music video for Paris Hilton's Paris for President song. See, you learn something new every day. What you can do with that information, I don't know, but you can have it now. Attack on Titan doesn't just have links to chess, World War II, Avril Lavigne, and Paris Hilton music videos, a sentence I never thought I would say, but it also makes reference to Norse mythology. While the characters may have a German basis with a Japanese character, they seemingly play out a number of Norse legends. In fact, in Viking lore, there is a sea of flames and a land of ice where a bunch of giants live, and the Norse gods created a giant wall to keep them out. When the apocalypse came, also known as Ragnarok, the giants would break through the wall and kill all of the gods. Now, while the titans have already broken through the wall, the apocalypse is yet to come for the main characters, although it still might. But Armin makes a reference to a sea of flames and a land of ice beyond the wall a direct reference to Norse mythology. As we just mentioned, the show is based on Germany, so it is probably unsurprising to learn that the main city featured in Attack on Titan is based on a real place. The inspiration for the city is Nördlingen, which is one of the oldest cities in the country, with it being over a thousand years old and still having old walls that encompass the perimeter. Although, to my knowledge, there are no titans attacking them. If you ever find yourself being a mother in an anime, make sure of one thing. Don't tie your hair into a small braid that hangs over the shoulder. That's because there's seemingly a trend in anime that if you wear this hairstyle, the character will either die or is dying. And this hairstyle is being rocked in Full Metal Alchemist, My Neighbor Totoro, Bleach, and of course, Attack on Titan. We really should have known that Eren's mom was going to die just by looking at her, shouldn't we? Now, seeing as Attack on Titan will soon be coming to an end, let's end this video discussing how that might happen. This might not be something you necessarily missed, but previously, Isayama has stated that he plans on ending the series by killing off all of the main characters and leaving the plot unresolved. But this plan could cause a big backlash amongst the fans, and Isayama has said that he's worried about the amount of hate he could receive if he ends the series this way. Isayama has brought resolution to a number of plot points to appease fans, but he seemingly still wants to fulfill his original vision, so don't be surprised if the show ends in a bloodbath. I know I won't be. Alright, let's leave you with one last piece of trivia. Hajime Isayama came up with the idea for Attack on Titan after being attacked by a man at an internet cafe where he worked who wouldn't listen to what he was saying. 
From there, Isayama came up with the idea of a group of enemies who couldn't be communicated with. 